excited to have them both and get and for them to get to know each other. Well, uh, we we discussed off air how we would kind of do this, and so uh, with not to dishonor Chuck, who's really the elder here, but Chris had a dream recently. And so many people have been asking me about your dream that I that I uh, sent a little text to Chris, and then just in the day we decided let's get everybody on. So Chris, let's hear your voice. Tell them about the dream. I know you've told it before, but tell everybody now, please, if you would. Yeah. So I had this dream uh, March twenty fifth, um, twenty twenty two. I was actually staying up in Moravian Falls for a few days, and. Um, this is the dream. I'll get right into it. And by the way, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be with all of you. Um, in the dream, I saw an unknown man dressed in a black suit holding a $50 bill. In the dream, he tore the $50 bill in three stages. In the first stage of the dream, he stood in front of me and he took the $50 bill and he tore off one third of it. And as he did, <clears throat> random people started coming up, bringing me national newspapers, one right after the other, and all I could read were the headlines or the sub-headlines. The first one read, after he tore off one-third of the $50 bill, quote, the dollar drops 30% in value, unquote, Mideast oil strikes deal with China instead of the U.S., I was then handed another headline entitled, quote, the perfect storm, unquote, inflation reaches a new high. I was then handed another headline which read, quote, food shortage crisis as wheat and bread imports are at a stalemate. Then another headline was handed to me which read, quote, riots and civil unrest as citizens demand entitlement checks unquote in the second stage of the dream <clears throat> i again directed my attention back to the man dressed in black holding the rest of the 50 dollar uh, bill and this time he tore it in half and as he did i felt an earthquake under my feet and a person walked up to me and handed me a newspaper and the headlines read quote israeli and palestinian two-state solution reached unquote then another person came up and handed me another headline which read quote major earthquake hits the middle of the u.s unquote in the third stage of the dream, the man in black took the rest of the $50 bill and started tearing it into smaller pieces, one by one. Then another person walks up and hands me a headline which read, quote, America in pieces, more states secede from the nation in rebellion to the federal government. I was then handed another headline which read, quote, U.S. military takes charge as uncertainty looms over the federal government, unquote. In the fourth stage and final stage of the dream, the man in black took out what looked like a new $1 bill, but somehow it also looked like a cell phone. And I saw George Washington's face on it, but it looked different. <clears throat> and as I looked at this and pondered this, Someone else came up to me and handed me another newspaper and its headline read, quote, new currency for a renewed nation. The last headline handed to me read, quote, simplicity restored as Americans grow their own food again, unquote. That's the end. Wow. 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 Love it. Thank you, Lord, for giving that. And so what, what is your interpretation of this, uh, Chris, or as much as you have now anyway? Yeah, after I had the dream, of course, I was very uh, waking up feeling very disturbed and grieved down in my spirit. I mean, I felt a real grieving in my spirit. And so I talked with um, Rick Joyner and also our team here. 
And I'll just share kind of the insights that we had quickly from each uh, stage. So the man in black, you know, the possible symbolism tied to this, Johnny Cash was also known as the man in black. And if, I'm, not, I'm not saying it was Johnny Cash, but obviously the $50 bill is cash. Johnny Cash, the man in black. And so Johnny Cash is dressed in black and I think it's representing his mourning for the moral and spiritual depravity that is growing in America. I also felt that the $50 bill represented the 50 states. Mm -hmm. but, but 50 is also the number of the Jubilee. And I think that when we begin to understand, you know, like the, the Hebrew feast days, the, the Jubilee, a lot of eschatology can begin to make sense. So 50 is the number of Jubilee. And at the end of the dream, there seems to be almost like an American renewal or a restoration, all that a Jubilee accomplished in scripture, which was, you know, the wiping away of all previous debt. Uh, if you lost your home, it was restored to you at the Jubilee. If you were trying to work off a debt in slavery, you were freed from slavery. <clears throat> well, the first uh, headline, which said the dollar drops 30%, and the subheadline or subtitle was the Mideast oil that strike, struck a deal with China instead of the U.S. The U.S. dollar, of course, is no longer backed by anything but faith and trust in the U.S. government. Yeah. And the recent demonstration of our, you know, our government leaders, the, the inept, out of touch with the world economic issues, it seems like there is a flight taking place to another more stable economic leader in the world, at least for a period. And that seems to be a, um, as China is growing in influence, and of course they've been competing with the United States for years, but there is a turning to China and a shocking demonstration of how much faith and trust America has lost just in the past year. You know, with the Afghanistan debacle and all of that, I think we need to prepare for a serious devaluing of the U.S. dollar. Now, that is not to put anybody in fear. When we get prepared, we can deal with the fear. So preparation is the key, I believe. The next headline, the perfect storm, inflation reaches a new high. Well, of course, inflation is in the U.S. right now is at a 40-year high. And I personally think it's actually much higher than it's being reported by our government. I agree. <clears throat> and the devaluing of the dollar by 30% would also, or could lead to a 30% jump uh, in inflation. So a lot of the current disastrous policies implemented during the COVID crisis, the mass spending, I think supply chain crisis, which is getting worse. And there's obviously been very little to no action by our government to correct it. Combining that with the Biden energy policy, it really is setting up for a potential perfect storm scenario that could likely shake our economy like it's not been shaken before. And, you know, of course, in 1929, the stock market crashed. That's within the last 100 years. I think a lot of people my age would look at something like this and say, oh, you know, this could never happen. Something like this could never happen, but we're no better than our fathers. And there was a time in America less than a hundred years ago where people did stand in bread lines and soup lines. Now there was no preparation really for that. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying that people watching are going to stand in soup lines or bread lines. I'm just making the point that the whole idea of an economic crash is not something that is completely unrealistic <clears throat> in light of the fact of the blooming spending that is just out of control there has to be at some point a reckoning of that that cannot go on adding another five or ten trillion dollars every five or ten years um <clears throat> the food shortage crisis headline you know i'm sure you heard this recently in poland uh, biden admitted that there was he finally admitted there would be food shortages and I know that other prophetic voices, including Rick uh, Joyner, has been warning for decades, um, you know, or at least over a decade, that 
uh, this is upon us. And it's also not a coincidence in light of this dream and, and looking at the possible interpretations that Ukraine is not just the breadbasket of Europe, but it's the breadbasket of the world. Yeah, it really is. And the U.S. imports much of its wheat from Ukraine. And so the Russian invasion, of course, of Ukraine is going to have a major impact on world food supplies, including ours. Uh, riots and civil unrest. The next headline is citizens demand entitlement checks. You know, riots and civil unrest are inevitable because of our growing uh, entitlement programs. You know, nearly one half of the U.S. population depend on government programs. And the government doesn't seem, at least now, to have the wisdom or the resources to meet the needs of the population if something like this or when something like this happens. And I think a lot of people are personally unprepared. Um, and I, I think that that could lead to a desperation um, of a lot of people if the government cannot, cannot help, which is why I think we personally uh, need to be prepared. <clears throat> in the second stage of the dream, you know, the $50 bill was torn in half. And the first headline was Israeli and Palestinian two-state solution reached. I know Prophet Bob Jones uh, warned for years, and Rick told me this after we went through this dream, that when the U.S. tried to pressure Israel to give up more land for peace, that the new Madrid fault line, which is in the middle of the nation, would be activated, that there would be, um, you know, an earthquake, in, in his words, literally tear our nation uh, into two. Uh, by destroying all the bridges even across the Mississippi River. I'm not saying that's connected to this, but you could see potentially how it is considering the next headline in the dream was major earthquake hit the middle uh, of the U.S. <clears throat> and then the, the third stage of the dream, the first headline was America in pieces as more states secede from the nation in rebellion to the federal government. <clears throat> you know, the American people obviously many state government leaders understand uh, that it is the policies coming from our federal government that have led to the crises that i believe is tearing our nation apart the disaster right now at the southern border um, and i know for instance i can say that rick also has had a number of prophetic dreams about states and people turning against the federal government that would break the states up into smaller, more regional associations, almost like a sheep and goat alignment of the states in the world of, of nations, but in the states as well. And then this next headline, the U.S. military takes charge as uncertainty looms over the federal government. I think, um, you know, I'll share this. Rick also had told me um, that in 1987, he was shown that that the U.S. would go through a period of, of martial law oh. and that when he was first shown this, the Lord told him to start praying uh, for whoever the marshal would be, that they would be someone committed to restoring our republic, restoring our constitution as the supreme law of the land, that the martial law wouldn't last long until there was a restoration to our constitutional foundations, which seemed to be in the final stage of the dream, I was given the new $1 bill, meaning one, our unified nation, one nation with George Washington's fate, res restoring this unified nation under the principles of our founders. You know, George Washington being, of course, our first president. In the last stage of the dream, the men in black took out what looked like the $1 bill that looked like a cell phone and, it, and the headline, New Currency for Renewed Nation. <clears throat> Obviously, this could play into the Jubilee um, since there is an unsustainable spending crisis that it could possibly lead to where we literally have to hit a, a reset button. Um, and a new form of currency, I, I, you know, with a cell phone looking like the $1 bill, maybe that's some form of digital currency. Um, and then the last headline, uh, you know, simplicity restored 
as Americans grow their own food again. I think we're going to see a renewed interest in victory gardens like those, you know, that rose up in World War II. You know, the citizens of the Allied Nations became good at growing their own food in their backyards. That most of the, the grown up uh, that had grown up on farms could actually be devoted to the troops and to the war effort. I think this could be a matter of survival for some. And I also think that, you know, various parts of the nations will be affected by this more than others. I'll make one last point. The man in black, I think it's also interesting in the book Revelation chapter six that the black horse rider. Yeah, I thought of that. The economy was tied to that, a measure of wheat yeah. for penny. Yeah. Wheat. I mean, how ironic that the black horse rider said a measure of wheat for a penny. And so, but the also command was touch not the oil and the wine. So somehow I think that with the people of God being prepared, those who possess the oil and the wine, God is going to preserve us. I believe there's going to be a supernatural preservation on those who have the oil and the wine, like the children of Israel, for instance, in the land of Goshen, they were preserved and protected when there was judgment going on. But I do not think that we should look at this and say, you know, well, God's just going to take care of us. So let's just go on as normal. I think that responsibility requires us to be prepared, even if that means getting a few extra canned goods and non-perishables each time we go to the grocery store. This is not to put people in fear, but I believe this is a warning from the Lord, and we would be remiss not to take action. Wow. Thank you, Chris. Wow. Oh, I know your time's short, so jump right in. Uh, well, first of all, Chris, I want to say it's so awesome to have a fresh voice saying these things. Uh, some of us, like Rick, Mike, Cindy, me, have said it for years and years, and uh, got it written. Now, one, th I, there's just two or three things I want to say. First of all, uh, we did a show last week, Daniel Namber, who were in Israel for 10 years, did a show on preparing because God told them starting in October to prepare for this. So they've been doing that personally, and now they're, uh, they're sharing it wherever, whatever, whenever they share. And so that show's available for people to watch. And then, second of all, <clears throat> the thing I want to say here, one of the things the Lord showed me in 2008 were apostolic centers that had to teach the community to do the things you just listed. We have been uh, striving for that for 11 years now and feel like we have just overcome. Now the community comes here for the teaching of farming. All the farmers meet here, all the master gardeners meet here, all the uh, master naturalists, as well as we're teaching, Pam has developed a teaching that shows how to take from a garden to a community barn and then to an agroforest, then back into a house. So now all of the communities in our area are joining in on this teaching, which is very important. Uh, so I want to encourage people out there to know what Chris is saying is very, very accurate. Uh, another thing I want to say is Mike and Cindy just recently had a meeting called Out of the Box. If we don't start thinking out of the box, we're in tremendous trouble. Much of what you are saying came forth in some of the messages, which is important. Uh, another thing I want to say is we are in a Passover season. Therefore, every Passover, a crisis is going to arise in this 10-year period, and we as God's people must be ready to pass over and war in it. I wrote a book called Passover Prophecies. It even has the thing about the new currency in it. I had a dream about it, and it was linked with the uh, shipping blockage that is going on today. That happened two years prior to that. So with the shipping blockage that's going on, we are coming into a currency crisis. The next thing I would like to encourage you with is Ukraine, uh, Russia and Ukraine. This is, you have Russia and Ukraine pulling the US uh, and really Russia targeting uh, Israel. And then you have China 
making sure that we are being pushed out. Now, that was what God showed me in 86 through 10-year increments through 2026. I want people, as they listen to this, to go back and listen to Chris's dream that he had. It is playing out to a T, what God has been saying. And it's not like we have not been sharing and um, all those future war books have, have all of that in it about China by 2026 being the strongest controlling nation in the world, but them and Russia had to align. Uh, Russia, uh, I think the last thing I would say is we have to understand that today, Russia attached the ruble to gold. That changes the whole economy of the world. They will, there will be no longer payments backed by dollars or euros. And that will start shifting and play a part in the next year that is going to change our economy. Now, what do I want to say to all you listening? God says for us not to fear. In Joseph's day, there was a drought. In uh, Ruth's day, there was a drought. And all through the word of God, uh, the uh, prophets uh, uh, from uh, in Acts, there was a drought. We have to know we are coming into a place where we have to listen to the word, process it, and not be afraid to move in it. Now, for the U.S., I only see maximum 23 states aligning in days ahead. God showed it to me in 2008. I do not see what we call the United States uh, uh, ending up looking like that. And that brings me to the last thing. Uh, the $50 bill was initiated in Grant's presidency. And uh, that was probably one of the worst times of this. And in your dream, I see the Lord saying, I'm going to have to even rip that apart and start redistricting what needs to be happen. We were presently in a 13 colony uh, meeting in Pennsylvania and in Trenton. Uh, in Philadelphia and Trenton, uh, and uh, I said, you know, God had purpose for each one of those 13 original colonies all the way through uh, the Carolinas, and yet the Washington, D.C. was not the ever meant to be the ruling force of what God intended for this nation. So I want to agree with Chris and say that will shift in days ahead, and we must be prepared for that shift as that comes. Uh, God showed me one time uh, a, a capital arising out of San Antonio, and there's other places that we will see new alignments occurring. So Chris, thank God that you were bold enough to share your dream Thank God that it gives us all revelation. Thank God for Morningstar, and we're ready to move forward and keep pressing until we overcome. Wow. You know, I, I just want to reemphasize something that, that Chuck said. Uh, you know, Grant was in history on the stage when the United States was torn in two. He's also the president on the $50 bill. It's interesting. I went to look this up, um, the vignette on the back of the note, not the face of the note, but the back of the $50 note changed in 1929, interestingly enough, and as you know, it is, to feature the United States Capitol. And there's some significance to that too, I think. So, um, you know, it, it's interesting that it was a $50 bill with Grant, who was there when the United States first was torn in, in asunder. Yeah, you know, whenever uh, whenever I hear a dream like this, and the reason I had Chris on and I asked Chuck, you know, was I, I do believe it's a dream for the Lord. Now, immediately, Whenever I hear a dream, I start asking questions, and I, I was dialoguing a little bit with Chris earlier. Number number one, can can Second Chronicles seven fourteen avert it completely? Okay, I or could it be lessened? Okay, uh, I also 
my other also my other thinking and maybe check you want to chime into this can the 2022 elections change it at all or the 2024 elections you want to talk into that yeah i i mean i do think a shift in uh i believe right now we're in a war over who will rule in the future and yes, I do believe authority is very important and that things can come into a new rule. I, I'm sort of like Chris, I think this is inevitable, but in the inevitableness of it, it rearranges everything that we are presently striving in. Just as I believe COVID it was a pull aside pause to start identifying a new remnant. I think, Cindy, because we've been in the prayer movement so long since the uh, since 1990, I think I think a whole new remnant is arising. They have to be have prophetic ears. They have to know what the what the Spirit is saying to the church. I've always felt like God would start looking at each region of America based upon the seven key churches like he did in Revelation and based upon how they respond is how they move forward. Now, you know, us three went to all seven churches and saw that they don't exist anymore. I don't want that to become what we are here. And I do believe region by region, we are being looked at now by the Lord. I do not believe we are being looked at as a whole nation. I think that is an older paradigm that we can no longer just embrace saying all of America will will turn. No, all of America, I don't think will turn. I, God didn't show me. He showed me. 23, which is less, less than 50% of it turning. But I do believe there is a remnant in every state of America. And I do believe that remnant will connect into a regional move of God in days ahead. I believe the move of the Spirit of God is on the way, but I don't know how the present church will receive that. They've never really received the big move of the Spirit of God. But what Chris is saying is perhaps this will cause them to awaken to the need of hearing the Spirit of God telling us how to overcome. Well, let's factor, uh, either of you can answer this, or we'll start with Chucky since he's going to leave soon, or we can talk with Chris maybe a few minutes more. But... How does this factor into all the prophets prophesied revival, awakening, signs and wonders? Let's throw well, that I, do, I do think revival's coming. I think that there's going to be an incredible move of Holy Ghost in, in America again. Uh, I think there will be miracles and signs and wonders, but I also know that in the midst of any move, there's a great threshing that goes on. And I, I see America being threshed over these next, uh, especially, and I, I want to say this, Chris, about your dollar being torn in thirds. I think it's three years ahead we're going to be threshed. Mm. And, uh, and I think that's very important for revival. Uh, you know, I'm not real, I'm, I've never been a doom and gloom prophet, and I'm, but I'm, I'm sure not a Pollyanna either. I, I think we're going to see a threshing over the next three years. And I think we've got a good outline of how it's going to look. And of course, after being working in China in the 80s and Russia in the 80s and 90s, uh, all of this is playing into the U.S. is threshing, and it always will revolve around Israel. The states God showed me in covenant with the Lord are those states that do have an understanding of the God of Israel. And that's, and we have collected states that have aligned with Israel. We have, uh, we have the certificates of states that have aligned with Israel. And uh, it's about it, it's it's about twenty plus right now states that have uh, recently aligned with Israel, and that's going to be our telling point in days ahead. Wow, Chris or Mike? Okay. Yeah, Chris, did you want to chime in on some of the things he said? 
Yeah, I think historically, some of the greatest revivals in history have come out of a time of great trouble and, and, and persecution. Now, of course, in our Western American minds, especially those of us who walk with the Lord, we know the Lord, we think within ourselves, well, we, I don't need something like this to cause me to turn to the Lord, seek the Lord. Well, that might be true, but I think that the broader population, the unbelievers, the citizens of our nation, because we've had and we've lived in a land of plenty and abundance for so long, I think we've trusted in so many things other than the Lord that a lot of the Marxist thinking, a lot of the uh, humanism that has settled into our culture, our universities, has caused us to think less and less of God, uh, to think less and less of a Judeo-Christian value system. And I think historically this is true, and I think presently it's true. It will be a time of difficulty, a time of crisis, when all of those things are stripped away that men depend upon and look to, um, that ultimately that's the thing that will cause people's hearts to be ripe and prepared for the Lord when they have nothing else to distract them or pull their passion and interest into other than we need a Savior. And, this is bad. and, we, and we need to... Uh, trust in what the spirit's going to show us i want to i want to end cindy before i have to go saying i want to refer back to your out of the box gathering that was a very very good gathering that uh we had that helped people and uh but we end up doing exploits exploits are are are, are linked to two different laws biblically the law of use and the law of multiplication in other words, we learn to take resources and we learn to look at what we have, take the resource and make it into something else. That's where America's headed. And it's like we have not wanted to be disciplined to go there. We have wanted to remain using uh, uh, and going into debt over things we didn't have any longer. And God is saying, listen, trust me, I'm going to teach you how to do exploits in the midst of this. You will do exploits and you will end up prospering more in the process of it. But I've got to rearrange things to get you to that place. Yeah, and Chuck. So, also, I really appreciate you all for doing this. Chuck, it out of the box, you gave a phenomenal thing. And we also had a whole session on all kinds of cryptocurrencies, which, you know, uh, we're not giving people a word to buy whatever, but it was pretty phenomenal. We had leaders, major, major leaders from, um, uh, from Taiwan, different areas, discussing this. You know, they could be, I don't know. I can't say I have a word of the Lord, but it could be God. You know, let God show you what to do. You know, he wants to prosper you. He wants to bless you. In the midst of the greatest crisis, there was great prosperity. You know, so so you can either go the fear route and let this word just overwhelm you or say, oh, no, God, in the midst of this, how I prospered. Chad, before you go, you want to say anything about that? Yeah, absolutely. Every book I have tells us we're going to triumph. We're, we're uh, especially Passover prophecies. I mean, we're going to keep crossing over. But here's what happened in America, Cindy and Mike. We can go back to that era where uh, no one wanted to war. And they didn't want a war spiritually. They didn't want a war uh, in in uh, physically. That's unreal. We are in a spiritual battle, and we must learn and that we discern through the word and by the spirit. We are in a supernatural 10 years. God is going to give us all supernatural wisdom. And that's why this dream becomes so important. It is supernatural wisdom from God. We're hearing the book of Daniel come out. And Chris, that's probably why you felt so weary and out of it. So did Daniel. I mean, he says it two or three times in, in the book of Daniel. I was wiped out. <laughs> you probably were just wiped out because of what God showed you. But thank God. You have the, the strength and the unction to share what he's saying. And God is saying this. And we've got great resources, all of us for you. Rick has great resources. And you will try. 
Hey, man, thank you for joining us. I know you have to get on another call. I love Chris. you guys. I love you. And love Chris, you. great being with Tell Rick I love him. Y'all keep talking. Just keep, <laughs> keep on saying it. If you have a great <laughs> dream, say it again. Eventually, <laughs> they get used to you. <laughs> thank you, Chuck. Yeah, you. thank you. So, um, you know, Chris, I, I think... I think in light of this, I, you know, my take on it is that I do think that the 2022 and 2024 elections can mitigate against some of it. That's my personal feeling. Okay. And that, that can be judged by others. Um, I believe some of it's going to happen anyway, eventually. I, what, it, I, I think one thing is to say is, will God give us a, we had a window of grace. Will God give us a, yet another window of grace? Possibly, you know, uh, and, and uh, so I want to encourage everyone to pray. And, you know, and, and also another thing that Chuck said at the out of the box, what well, was out of the box? We did a by invitation business conference, marketplace conference here in Dallas, small, about 240 people, intentionally small. And and we discussed all kinds of things, even the cryptocurrencies and things like that. But, you know, uh, I think that God is going to reveal to you, like even when, when Jeremiah, you know, remember Jeremiah told the people, seek the peace in the city wherein you're, you're held captive, build houses. Well, they were going to have money. Build houses, plant vineyards. They were going to have money. You understand this? God wasn't sending them away and not making provision for them. And and I I and do I think there's going to be a civil war? I do. I want to say we're not advocating civil war here. We're not advocating the breakup of the federal government. We love America. I know people listen to this, and sometimes we say these things, and they take just a part of what we say. No, we don't want America to break up, okay? We don't want any of these things to happen. So, but we we need to, to be awakened, you know, and understand, is it going to be 10 years from now? I mean, Chuck was starting to say, you know, kind of how he thought it might unfold or three years you know that he said we have three years another thing he said at the out of box was get out of debt get out of debt and that's a very important thing to think about okay if you get out of debt you're gonna no matter what happens you're gonna be okay and and he also said which he didn't share here is that we could be a land of Goshen and to make sure that you live in the right place okay don't out of fear I mean, sometimes God God told people, pastors, to stay in Ukraine during the war, and they stayed, okay, because God told them to do that. So if you're that remnant in some of these states that even ones are trying to pass infanticide, then you better stay, and God will take care of you. Chris, uh, more thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I, I think uh, everything that you just said, agrees with my heart um i think that we are at a crossroads and i think we've kind of been at one for a number of years but i do think that there is a an opportunity when this happens the wealth of the wicked to transfer i mean uh, that you know it takes a shaking for things like that to happen and i'm almost believing that many of the things that we've been praying for for years revival you know the the realignment of nations for god to do great things i think that he is going to do that i believe i'm full of hope i'm full of you know i believe god loves america i love america but i think that god is going to use unorthodox things and methods that maybe we have in past times not been comfortable with because of our way of life that i think god's going to shake up a lot of things i think he's shaking things up now and i do i agree with you uh, on the 2022 2024 election i think those choices and how we uh, vote and how we respond there will be a determining factor uh, in in a lot of this in that timeline i think i think that uh, there may be even some 
deeper things that we could gain from understanding the whole, the whole uh, uh, part of the dream about Grant and the $50 bill. Um, for, in 1929, like I said, they shifted the back of the, 20, the $50 bill to show the U.S. Capitol. Okay, and that's in, in 1929, as you know, for some of you who are not old enough to remember, or in another we had an incredible economic <laughs> collapse in 1929 called, and that resulted in what we called the Great Depression, which was certainly a time of, of economic upheaval. And it's interesting that they, that maybe typologically, maybe prophetically, they put the U.S. Capitol on there as a sign that people were really looking to the federal government of the United States to be the solution provider. And what I'm sensing is the earth is not groaning for the revelation of a righteous United States of America. The whole earth is groaning for the revelation of the sons of God, and that's you. He's, the, the earth is looking for you to rise up to the level that you were created for. This is your season. I mean, if anything, Chris, we should, as believers, particularly those who are, are spirit-led believers, should be excited beyond measure because this is our time to shine. I mean, the scripture that says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. This is our season. This is the, the time frame in which God puts you on the earth, and the earth is looking to you, not a federal government of any nation. Yeah, and Chuck also said to me earlier that this Passover, which is, I can't remember, April... The 17th, yeah. I mean, I, you know, or whatever. I can't remember. You know I the dates. It begins on uh, Good Friday, actually. I think yeah. that begins on Good Friday this year. And this is one of the, another one of those convergences where, you know, we have Easter and Passover, some other uh, dates also, I know, you know, from other religions are kind of converging. But what he said is this is a very important Passover. This is an important Passover to take stock this is an important passover we can't be lazy christians we can't just assume like there's going to be business as usual before the 2008 crash the lord said there will be no more business as usual so that's established no more business as usual so you know and so i want to say to you this is a time to seek the lord this is a time to say what should i do for my family not to be in fear. Listen, God multiplies. So I've seen food multiplies numbers of times. Okay, you know, so don't, you know, uh, yes, you know, yes, as the Lord guides you, you know, uh, get some whatever kind of food, you know, or, or buy something. But, but the thing is, remember, you are supernatural too. Okay, so there are elements of this. We're not like the world. We're not of the world. We're, we're different. And, uh, so anyway, this is just a little bit of encouragement. Yeah, I just I just want to close with this because I really, really yeah, we're really short let's of time. let Chris have a final statement too, honey. Okay, well he can have his final statement after your final after statement. After my final statement, you then I'll pick up the offering okay. and then you can sing the benediction. <laughs> okay. Uh, at the end of our out of the box conference, our business conference, it was interesting that after all of the information had been provided, it was under a real amazing spiritual atmosphere that. A, a couple people came to me and said, we're, we're the techies, you know, we are the ones who are creative technologically, and we want to start a group, if, if you will allow us, because we feel this drawing together that we're going to be used by God to develop new technologies and release new technologies into the earth realm. And then another person came up to me and said, there's some of us here that are, are the creatives, and we feel a need to begin to draw together and because God wants to release some new creative things into the earth. Listen, I think those are the seeds of what the Lord is saying prophetically to us as believers. Find those that are like you, that have the same calling as yeah, you. Find your tribe. You. Find your tribe <laughs> because they're, they're, the exploits that will happen many times will be a corporate expression of the body of Christ, not just necessarily an individual expression of the body of Christ. So be sensitive in this time that God's going to start bringing people across your path that are not just acquaintances, but they're going to be people that you're supposed to get close to at this time because the, the word says, know those 
who co-labor among you. So find your tribe, as Cindy said. Chris, final words. Well, awesome. I love that, Mike. Um, you know, you quoted Isaiah 60. You know, I'd like to look one last time just at the context of when the glory comes and the light shines. Isaiah 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, in other words, look, yeah. notice this. Darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you, and the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of the rising. When is the glory going to come? When's the light going to shine? The stars shine the brightest when this night sky. When there's a night sky, that's when the stars shine. And I think right now, what this is saying is when this time comes, don't get in fear, don't lose hope. Know that the darkness, the gross darkness of the world is so that those who have the light can be seen. And even kings and presidents and senators and prime ministers are going to come to us, us for answers because we can even discern the secrets of the in the king's bedroom and so i think that glory of the lord is going to rise in the midst of the darkness and that's when the world is going to look to us instead of the government for the answers wow yeah saying, god's going to shake everything that can be shaken yeah. but the silver and gold is the lord's one little thing i didn't even say listen you need to follow chris reed i didn't even talk about he has these he he has dreams and then uh, he, uh, he'll tell prophesy to people or he knows what they dreamed and he'll prophesy into their dreams. It's, it's an amazing seer, dreamer, really unique gift. And so you're going to just be blessed by everything that he does. So Chris Reed, R E E D, you want to follow him. And we just love you, Chris. Yeah, thank, thank you for, you for being on the air with this us. This is really significant, I think. So well, it was an honor and we love you and Look forward to future times together. Thank you for having me today. I'm sure we'll have many. Bye, everybody. Bye. We love, you. we love them, too. Yeah, we love All them, too. All the people who watch us. And, All the people like, love like the Like world. he said, he said it perfectly. Arise, shine, for your life, your life has come. So that's what we leave it with. God's and I think we better just, released. like, get off air. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>